Gentlemen, Gentlemen, ladies, hey y'all, it's your boy, Sonic XD. Ha! And today, we are gonna be doing a Beastars character tier list. Ah! Since tier lists have been more popular recently, I thought it'd be fun if I make my own Beastars character tier list. Uh, since I've become kind of the spokesman of Beastars now. <laughs> so in this video, uh, I'm gonna be rating most of the characters from Beastars. I'll be looking at their personalities, story arcs, and things that I personally like about them. I will not be rating their appearances. And if you wanna know why, you can read this. Most of the characters that I that I found are from this TV trope site. I'll be ranking the characters that I found in here and I'll add in some more because they, they didn't add it like they didn't put every single character in this in this list over here. Note that what I'm talking about currently is up to chapter 131. So if anything interesting happens later on, you know, characters could get buffed, characters could get nerfed. With that being said, sit back and enjoy my dumbass opinions. Our first combatant, Lego C S. Do I even need to explain myself? <laughs> I've already gushed about him for like the, for like a whole entire minute in my B Stars review. You know, I don't know if he's gonna be pronounced Legosi in the anime or Lugosi, because the author said that she stole Bella Lugosi's name. But uh, eh, we'll see when the anime comes out. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be called Legosi. Everything about this story that makes it really interesting is not just the world. It's not just the things that happen. It's Legosi. I come back reading B Stars just to see what the heck has this dumb baloof done again, and I can't way to enjoy the fuck out of it. He's your typical big scary beast, but he's trying his best to be kind-hearted. In this bizarre world with these bizarre rules, it's so fun to just follow with Legosi and just see how he handles things. Whenever he does things right, it's always very rewarding. Whenever he does stupid things, it always makes me feel so emotional. Like, no, why did you do that? Oh my gosh. Consequences happen to this character. This char We grow with this character. He's also got a very, very fun personality. I, I told you guys before, I'm into innocent idiots who become really cool when they get serious. He's just constantly trying to downplay himself, but when things get serious, he's like, the fuck you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this series would be as great as it is if Lego C was not a freaking S tier character. Now, next we're gonna talk about everybody's favorite rivalry, uh, Lewis. So Lewis is a cool dude. He's a genetic perfect boy. He wants to try to aim for the best of the best. He he did say he wants to strive to become the B star, and also he's a generic rivalry towards Lego C. But what makes him a great character? What makes him an A tier for me? is that he's only human. He has his own desires, he has his own personalities, he has his own weaknesses, and that's what makes him a great character. I absolutely love the banter he has with Legosi. But later on in the stories, the more I just see them both on screen, the more happy I am in, because it's just so fun. I also love his story arc. Like his story arc is very, very good in Beastars. Just in general, I think he, he is legit a very, very cool character. However, the reason why he is not in an S is, well, there's two very simple reasons. One, he is not better than Legosi as a character. I, I still think, I still think, he's a great character. He's very close to S, but no matter what, how I put it, like, I don't think he's better than Legosi. I still think Legosi is just a fantastic character. And even if he was at S, I may just put Legosi on an SSS tier. Two, and this is kind of spoily, so I'll put a spoiler warning here for about this many seconds. Just mute the audio if you don't want to hear it. So, uh, three, two, one. In the current chapter that I'm reading, where is he? <laughs> where, where, where did he go? Uh, I, I know, like, like oh, he's out of school now, but, like, um, he's just kind of gone. I, I, I just feel like, uh, hello? Like, I haven't, like, you're kind of an important character, but you're kind of gone now. Yeah, I know, the, like, the exact part where I'm reading, he's back. But I don't know, I just feel like there's just a big gap for it, for this character, and, I'm, and I kind of feel bad for him. I don't mind seeing more Lewis, especially since he's got a really big arc in this whole entire story. Okay, I'm done. So overall, a solid A, an A+, plus, fantastic character. Awesome dear Tsundere. So next we got Haru. Haru-chan, Haru. So my experience with Haru is that um, in the beginning of the series, I hated her. I, <laughs> I just like... I, I felt like um, Legosi has nothing good that'll come out of her if, if he goes near her. Nothing. nothing! Just whatever you do, do not go close to her. Do not chat with her. Every time I chat, I was so worried for Legosi. I, I hated her in the beginning of the series. But then, at a point later on in the series, there's this point 
where we sort of get her backstory, where we sort of get the sympathy part about her. And then because of that, I kind of like her then. <laughs> like, at that point, I'm like, yeah, they could work. I now kind of, like, I actually sympathize with you and, like, I like her now. It's it's really weird. And the other big thing that I and I really like about Haru is everything that motivates Legosi in this story is because of the character Haru. And I find that to be a very, very boosting point for like the characters and the relationships and stuff like that. The thing I also really like, there are people that still really hate Haru. Like they do not forgive her. They still think that she's just this unforgivable whore and stuff like that. And I think that's awesome. I think if a character can spark so many emotions for so many people, I think that's a good thing in these sort of stories. Yeah, because of how much she emotionally manipulated me, I'm gonna put her as an A. She should be a B, but I'm gonna put her as an A. Next, we're gonna talk about everybody's favorite doggo, Jackie! Jack! Yeah, yeah! I mean, who doesn't like Jack? Everybody likes Jack. Jack is a fun, he's Carrie, he's Legosi's best friend. He's generally just speaking, just a fun and awesome and cute character scene. I am sorry. I am sorry, but there is a very, very easy reason why I can just put Jack at C tier. Also including his 701 roommates. They are all in C. They're all with Jack, by the way. One very simple reason. They are almost irrelevant in the main storyline. Like, out of everything that happens in the story and what goes on, they aren't really like participating in it. The drama class people participate more in the main story arc than Jack and Room 701. And I feel like that's just a gigantic wasted potential. Like we know they're friends, but like I, I can barely think of too many things that they do in the main story that's relevant. Sure, they're fun characters when they're on screen and stuff like that, but like they just don't add much. Okay, I will say one thing I really do like about Jack, and it's not necessarily about the character, but it's more of how they introduce uh, pets in this world. Because in the world of Beastars, there's a lot of like wild animals. You got lions, you got bears, you got giraffes, but there aren't that many dogs or cats. So when they explained this in the story, they were like, oh, because of the war between the herbivores and the carnivores happened like a hundred years ago. And when the carnivores wanted to have more smarter creatures, they created the species known as dogs. They're not as strong as wolves, but they are smarter. And I thought that was an interesting like, history as to why we can get pets inside of the story of Beastars. And I thought that was pretty cool. But either way, like, I'm sorry, I, I like Jack. Everybody likes Jack, but I have to put him as a C because he's just not that important. So hopefully, because I think it's a little too late for the manga, but they hopefully they will do something to try and enhance Jack in the anime. Okay, next we're gonna talk about Juno. Juno-san! Juno is interesting to me because Juno is like the exact opposite of Haru in my opinion. I liked her in the beginning, but then at a point I just hate her. <laughs> like it is literally just the opposite of Haru. The point where I like Haru is the exact point where I hate Juno. You will know exactly where I'm talking about when you read there. Juno is actually a really interesting character. She's just this innocent girl outside, but like in the inside she's way more complicated. She really reminds me of um, Amy Kawashima from Torodoro. I think she's definitely an interesting character, and uh, I know I said I hated her, but like, yeah, 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 I, I, I'm slightly liking her a little more. Sadly, she, in my opinion, doesn't have that much screen time. If she has more, more to do, more screen time, then she might be bumped to an A. She is a contender to be uh, updated into an A, uh, like, any moment. I believe in her. I, she someday might be able to be A. Yeah, Next, we got Panda-san! Panda-san! Uh, what's his name? Uh, Guhem... Uh, okay. Uh, B! He is the Bara Daddy of this series. <laughs> he's a solid B character. I think he's a great mentor for Legosi in the story. He's got a strong boss attitude. He's the reason why this is also a shonen battle series. <laughs> he is also one of the important characters who introduces bondage into the series. But the big thing that I like about this character, he is... A big, strong bear, but he is not a carnivore. But because he, he himself believes that he's very strong, so he believes that he can take care of sick carnivores. And that's why he became a doctor, and he tries to help people. This is his way of how he believes that he can help other people, and I think that's a cool philosophy. Yeah, I like him with Lego C a lot too. I think they're great characters. Okay, that's basically all the main characters of the series. Also known as all the potential ships for Lego C. <laughs>
All right, next we're gonna talk about Tem Cham. Temi Tem Tem. Tem 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 D. So, you know, D because there isn't too much about this character that we know of, other than backstories. Like, if he, if he has more to offer, he might be bumped up, but you know, the problem is he's, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of dead. So yeah, D for dead. <laughs> I will say this, at least he's the character who started this whole entire series, so, you know, good for you, Tim. Next, we got Else. You thought that she was gonna be the potential lover for Lugosi, but it was me, Lewis! <laughs> ah, D. A Bill. A Bill. Bill the Tiger. Bill, in my opinion, was kind of like the mini boss character of the series. Like, uh, like he's not like the main villain of the series, but he said he sort of served as a well mini boss in my opinion in the series. Like, there was about like two or three trigger moments where like he did something that was like, ooh. I'm sure you guys know the part at the black market that he does that like really shocks a lot of people, and I think that's a good thing about this character. And he's not like a hundred percent villain, like. He's also just a young student with desires and pers and a personality and stuff like that. I, I think for what he does, he's a fine C character. I cannot wait to see how many people hate this character when the anime comes out. <laughs> Next, we got Owl Ball. Owl Ball. Um, he didn't do the bad thing when they were at the black market, so he's a good carnivore. Yeah. Okay, so. From this point on, the next characters that I'm going to be talking about are spoilers. Spoilers for these characters, spoilers for future events. So I just wanted to warn you guys that the next characters that I'm going to be talking about are spoilers. So we're just going to start off with the killer, Ritz-chan. Oh boy! Hey, this, this, this guy just scares me. Like, the, this character is so scary when you, it's revealed that he's the killer. He literally just looks at like Ghost, he's like, oh no, you found out. I have to kill you now. Oh my gosh, this character is so scary. I love it. And not only is he like this strong bear who just wants to kill, he's also sadly sympathetic. And I feel like this character is just a very, very great villain for this world and what it represents and what it's trying to go with and stuff like that. And I just, I like that a lot about this character. My only downside for this character is that in the beginning of the story, we, we already know that there is a killer inside the school and we're slowly trying to find out who it is. But the thing is, like, the, our, our potential suspects were basically like uh, Legosi and Juno, if you want to talk about characters that we knew. We do not know Ritz. Sure, he was there in chapter one, but like, he wasn't like a character. It's not like we were trying to like piece together the hints and it'll be like, oh my gosh, it's Ritz. No, like, Ritz just kind of popped out and like, yeah, I'm the killer, which kind of makes the mystery part a little unfulfilling, if you guys get what I mean. But that doesn't mean that Ritz is a bad character. That's more of a fault on like the mystery factor and stuff like that. I still think Ritz is a fucking horrifying awesome villain character. Next we got Pina, Pina, Pina-chan. Pina is your typical egotistical pretty boy. The, the moment he comes into the story, he just says, I hate carnivores. It's pretty freaking bold. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is th this character, like his existence is you're supposed to hate him. I, I don't really hate him actually. I kind of like him. It's, it's a little weird. His like, his like pretty boy persona is his, ch his charm, his annoyance part. But I also, one thing that I really like is how calm he is in the situation of death. Like he is the reason why the battle between Ritz and Legosi didn't immediately, like, happen. Yeah, for that, I do think he's- I think he's not a bad character, in my opinion. I would say, if he would- if he were to be a B or an A, like, dude needs more screen time. Literally, when the Ritz arc is done, he's gone, too. He's not even in the beginning of the story, he just pops up, Hey, y'all, Pina here, and he's gone. I, I really feel I really feel like it's too bad we don't get to see this character like at all basically. I actually just really wanted to see him like talk with Lewis. Like I think that banter would be really funny and he kind of reminds me of Lewis in a way. It's just too bad. I do feel like if this character has more screen time he could be better. He should be a D, but I kind of like him and I think some people want him in a C so I'm gonna put him in a C. Next we got uh, Ibuki. Okay, Ibuki is a... Ibuki is a solid B. 
Uh, he was the sort of father type, father figure character for Lewis. He's very likable in his personality. His death was very sad. Like, my friend who read this comic was like, till this day, he still thinks he didn't need to die. He didn't need to die. It's, it's really sad. But yeah, I like this character. In a world where a lot of cruel things happen, it's I'm, gl I'm glad this kind of character can exist to, you know, help out Lewis in that situation. Next, we got Rokumi. I thought it was interesting that she was on the list, but uh, yeah, we're gonna rate Rokumi. The concept of Rokumi is very cool. In this school, there is like legends and like ghost stories about a, about an entity, but it turns out it's just Rokumi and she's just the security guard, but she hides herself so nobody even knows that she exists. The concept is very cool in my opinion. She is also one of the characters who introduces bondage into the series. Two problems. Number one, she shows up, she asks the ghost see, hey boy, can you help me out? And then she leaves. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I did. The second problem with her is for being this impressive identity to be able to like be secretly spying on everyone in the school without being noticed, you'd think, you know, she'd find out who the killer is? But no, she asked Legosi for help Ow. and she never aids him at all? I don't know. <laughs> kind of makes you sort of useless. <laughs> I would have put her as a question mark, but the thing is, I don't think she's ever going to be enhanced later on in the story. Like, I don't think she's ever gonna appear later on in the story. If she somehow gets more appearances, then cool, I, sh I should put her at the question mark. But I really do think she's just, she's not gonna get any more, like, scenes. So, uh, so D. <laughs> Next we got, um, Cosmo. Again, a weird character for me to rate, but, uh, okay. Uh, she did Lone Digger and she sucked someone's D. So, D. <laughs> D for D, baby. <laughs> Next we got Seven. Okay. <clears throat> Padusan, I love Beastars. It is an amazing series. I love what you're doing. Why the fuck did you create this character? The only reason she exists is just because we're gonna add another potential ship for Legosi. Unbelievable. I, I cannot believe, believe that you do this to Legosi. Do you have any idea how painful it is for Legosi and how to be together when a character like this exists? She's fine, by the way. And she's really cute, so yeah. D. Next we got Naked Seals. Naked Seals? D for you know what. <laughs> the one interesting thing I can think about for uh, Zeguan is that he kind of introduces religion in the story or cultural differences in the story because he comes from the sea and what happens in the ocean is a whole nother world and a whole nother story and i think that is kind of interesting but uh he's 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 kind of a too much of a side character so i'll just put him as a d all right now we're gonna get to some of the big boys we're gonna big boy time we're gonna rate gosha so um a lot of people like Gosha, and, I can, and I've seen people like say things like he's like their favorite anime character and stuff like that, and like he's a fantastic grandpa. Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say this first. I think Gosha is like very likable, very cool. He's very nice on the outside, but like when he gets serious, he can beat the shit out of everybody. He legit just feels like a Legosi that actually knows things. <laughs> you know, a grown-up Legosi. The reveal that his grandfather is a Komodo dragon is pretty cool. That means that part of Legosi is actually amphibian, and um... Take, take that information however you want, I guess. <laughs> but the big, big problem, and why I'm gonna be putting him in the question mark tier, is there is this big gap for this character. Like, there is this just giant arc that we don't know about. Him and Yafia wanted to become B-Stars, but then he found love, and so he didn't want to become B-Star. Years later, it's just him and Legosi left in their family. What happened? Huh? <laughs> like, I, I really want to know what the heck happens in between this time. Even Gosha himself tells Legosi, you know, you don't need to know this. Because I have a feeling whatever this mystery is, is probably going to be the most depressing shit in the world. I just think this is just too big of a gap before I want to rate Gosha. But overall, I like this character. He's a great grandpa. But yeah, I'm not going to rate him. I'm going to put him as a question mark for now. All right, next we've got Yafya. Yup, yeah. You know, fun fact, uh, I believe in the story, um, there were a couple places in the in the book where his name was, instead of spelled Y-A-F, it was spelled Y-A-H. So he could be called Yaya? <laughs> Yaya? <laughs> yeah! 
Yaya is pretty important in the story because he's literally the beast star. Finally, we meet the beast star after this long in the story, and he's a pretty freaking badass horse dude. He's a cold-hearted character, but his intentions in the end are good. He wants peace in the world. Yeah, he's, he's a little, he's a little, he can be a little brutal at times. He kind of reminds me of Lewis and like how Lewis would be like in the future and stuff like that. He kind of is like Gosha in the sense that I want to put him in the mystery, but like the thing is I think he's had a, enough screen time for me to at least put him as a rating and I don't know if this is going to piss too many people off, but I'm going to put him as a C. Now I don't necessarily hate him, I think he's a cool character, but like the thing about him is that when he started off he seemed like this absolute disgustingly OP character, like he's the beast star and and he does he is very strong he does a lot of cool things he can literally look 350 degrees because he's a horse the thing is he's been defeated twice now <laughs> um uh and like i don't know that kind of makes you kind of suck now dude <laughs> i mean i don't really blame him but i don't know I, I i just think that i just think i don't know for being like a super op character if you can get like tricked twice now like eh, i don't know I should put him as a B though, you know, now I think about it, like, he is an interesting character, and I feel like as time develops, you know, I was originally gonna put him as a C, but I'm gonna put him as a B. Like, I feel like as time develops, he could even be an A, but for now, he's a really low-hanging B, in my opinion, but, um, yeah, there's the B star, baby. And last but not least, we are gonna get into Mirun. Mirun, I don't know how you pronounce his name. Uh, this, this character is way too new, I'm gonna put him as the question mark. Like, he does seem kind of creepy, as what I'm seeing right now, he does seem kind of scary. But uh, again, way too new in the story as of what I'm reading right now, so I don't want to rate him. Uh, some interesting things about him is that he is the first official mix character. He's half deer, half jaguar, I'm not too sure. And you know what, this character is kind of relatable to me. Like, oh my gosh, Mirun is a mix of two animals. Guys, I'm a mix of Taiwanese and American. <laughs> He's so relatable. Wow. You know what? I actually kind of like this character. <laughs> fuck this character. Fuck this character. F for fuck you. And this is my tier list. What do you guys think? Make your own tier list from the link in the description. Now I want to end this video off by asking you guys a kind of ironic question. Who do you ship Lego C with? Now, this is kind of a joke question, but like, the thing is, when the anime happens, the ship wars will commence, and it will be chaotic. And I'm just kind of curious, before that happens, like, who do you guys ship a go see since there's so many freaking contenders? For me, I officially support Haru and Legosi. Like, I, 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 I support that. Unofficially, Lewis and Legosi is so real. <laughs> It's kind of scary how real it is sometimes. <laughs> well, this was a fun ramble video that I made. I'll probably make another Beastars video when the anime comes out, because I'll definitely I'll definitely do a review. I'll definitely do something funny when that happens. If I ever make another Beastars video before the anime, I'm probably going to talk about Beast Complex, which is sort of a prequel, a another story in the world of Beastars. All right, that is all this time I have today. I'm going to get back to working on my MK11 shit. Thank y'all so much for watch. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Wow, you guys actually stayed for the end credits scene. I'm blushing. So all I'm gonna say here is go watch a Christmas season 2. It's so fucking good!